Have you ever noticed that most images of Edgar Allan Poe look the same? That's because they were all based on the same portrait. It's a tiny photograph called a daguerreotype right here in the Poe Museum's collection. Now you probably recognize the photograph, but you might not realize it's the worst picture of Poe ever taken. Poe is at the depths of despair just four days after a suicide attempt and less than a year before his mysterious death. We'll tell you the whole story on tonight's Curator's Script. Welcome to the Poe Museum's Curator's Crypt. I'm Chris Sittner, the curator here at the Poe Museum in Richmond, Virginia, the world's finest collection of Edgar Allan Poe artifacts and memorabilia. And I'm here to talk to you about one of my favorite artifacts. It's the Cornwell daguerreotype of Edgar Allan Poe. Now, you've probably already seen the image on bobbleheads, keychains, t-shirts, book covers, comic books, Band-Aids, even socks, have this iconic image on them. But what most people don't realize is there's a pretty dark story behind it. It was November of 1848, almost a year before Poe had died. He'd spent the last year traveling, giving public readings. His last book, Eureka, had been a dismal failure in hopes of finding someone to take his wife's place after her early death, he appealed to Annie Richmond in Lowell, Massachusetts, writing her poems like For Annie and A Dream Within a Dream. But she wouldn't leave her husband for him, so that wasn't going to work out. Then he traveled down to Richmond, Virginia, where he struck up an acquaintance with Elmira Royster Shelton, who decades earlier had been his fiancée until her father broke off the relationship. But then Poe received a poem from Sarah Helen Whitman, the Providence, Rhode Island poetess and spiritualist. In no uncertain terms, she said that she'd like to fly away with the raven to his airy up in the sky. So he dropped everything, went to Providence to meet her, immediately fell in love with her. Now this was a woman after his own dream. She believed they were soulmates. They both were born on January 19th. They were spiritually linked. So he did whatever he could to try to impress her. He proposed to her over and over again. He pleaded with her to marry him, but she wouldn't do it. So after one hard rejection, he went back to his hotel room and swallowed a bottle of laudanum. Now, laudanum was a painkiller made of opium and alcohol. Usually, a couple drops to take care of your toothache, your backache. He just swallowed the bottle, hoping it would kill him. Instead, it made him throw up. After surviving the attempt, he stumbled to the post office to mail a letter to Annie Richmond, saying he just wanted to be with her when he died. Along the way, apparently, he collapsed and Sarah Helen Whitman's friends took care of him. Unfortunately, they took him out drinking, not realizing that it took about a glass of wine to make him staggering drunk, and he'd be sick for days afterwards. 
After recovering from this, Poe had his picture taken. Now, the photograph they had available at the time was called a daguerreotype. It's pretty expensive. It was more than most people made in a whole day. Poe had about eight daguerreotypes made of him during his lifetime. Most of them were made for admirers of his. So we think that maybe Poe had this picture taken because the daguerreotypist paid him to sit so he could sell copies of it from his studio. And in fact, that's what happened. The original daguerreotype was placed in a wooden frame, displayed in the daguerreotypist studio for years afterwards. At least five copies were made, of which ours is one of them, before the original disappeared around 1860. We don't know what happened to it after that. Now the good news is that about 11 days after Poe's suicide attempt, things started to turn around. He wrote a letter that started out after a long and bitter struggle with illness, poverty, and the thousand evils which attend them. I find myself at length in a position to establish myself permanently and to triumph over all difficulties. Poe is on the rebound. Things were looking up. He was about to start his own literary magazine. And on the same day, Sarah Helen Whitman had finally accepted his marriage proposal. But she had one condition. She said, if you ever touch alcohol again, the wedding's off. So they're engaged for about one month. The good news is back in Richmond, Elmira Shelton was still available, so he eventually made his way back to Richmond. And there he joined the Sons of Temperance and became a temperance advocate and a teetotaler. And it looks like he stopped drinking for the last few months of his life. Meanwhile, this iconic daguerreotype, Sarah Helen Whitman considered it the finest image of him ever made. It looked like he'd been to the ends of the world and back. So Sarah Helen Whitman had copies made for friends of hers, and one of them was a Dr. Cornwell, who lived in Connecticut. And his daughter is the one who approached the Poe Museum back in the 1930s. Now, the 1930s, this was the middle of the Great Depression. People were selling off their possessions, trying to make ends meet, and the Poe Museum was flooded with people trying to sell their Poe artifacts and memorabilia, and the museum just did not have the funding for it at the time. And it looks like we only had this daguerreotype because of one woman, Mary Gavin Trailer. She was the secretary of the board. Half the day she spent writing for the local newspaper. The other half of the day she worked at the museum as the curator, librarian, hostess, and tour guide. And she saw this daguerreotype and knew it's something she needed for the collection. She approached the board and they said, we don't have any money for it, but if you can raise the money, you can get it. So she set out to do her research. She found out what the market value was for this item. And then she approached everyone she could, the ambassador, famous writers. And she was able to somehow come up with enough money to purchase the daguerreotype, which at the time was hundreds of dollars. In today's money, that would have been tens of thousands of dollars. 20 anonymous post supporters eventually combined their funds and brought this daguerreotype to the back to the museum, where it's still on display today. And when we're open again, you'll have to come back on down here to check it out. Whenever you're in need of items with Poe's face on them, and who isn't, just visit the Poe Museum's online store at poemuseum.org slash museum store. Your purchase helps support the Poe Museum. If you'd like to make a contribution to the museum, just visit poemuseum.org slash support and help us illuminate Poe for everyone evermore.